Do you know what subjects are? What are the difference between commission and brokerage? Do you know what claims are? We use terms as PDAs and FDAs. In this video, we'll be looking into these. Hey, what's up? It's Akash from ShipScope, bringing you the best platform to learn about the commercial shipping subjects. In the previous Chartering 101 lecture series, we have learned about the basics of chartering, we have seen the, how the chartering process works, and in this lecture, we will be looking into additional terms and used in chartering. If you are new here, consider subscribing at any point of the video. So let's get into it, shall we? Hi guys, welcome to Chartering 101 by ShipScope. So today's content, we are going to study about the charter party forms, we are going to see subjects in depth followed by commission and brokerage what are pdas and fdas storage factor relate and rider clause time charter equivalent and we will be seeing we'll be finishing the lecture three by additional terms so charter party forms a charter party form is a maritime contract between whom between the principles which is ship owner and a charter to hire the ship or carriage of passengers or the cargo okay it means that the charter party will clearly and unambiguously set out the rights and responsibilities of both the parties which is ship owner and charter and if any dispute happens and that will be settled in the court of law and the the terms will be looked into the agreed terms and conditions embodied in the charter party okay that is where the charter party is so important in the dry cargo segment we have gencom for voyage charter party nyp 93 is for time charter party in dry segment as, as far as the tanker segment is concerned, we have Asma Tank Voyage, Voyage for the Voyage Charter and the Shell Tank 4 for the Time Charter. We will be looking into these charter parties in depth, especially with the, all the relevant clauses in our upcoming lectures. Okay? What are subjects? Now, we have already studied subject in our previous lecture, but this time we will be looking into depth. As you know, subject means su subject to a certain condition. So, the first thing is subject to details. This subject indicates that these are the main terms of the fixture which are be agreed upon. So, which includes, you know, freight, ladies, load, discharge port. So, this all needs to be checked by the charterer when the ship is put on the subject. The subject is for limited amount of period. So, they will be, it can be for 24 hours, it can be for 48 hours. It depends on how much time is allocated to charter to check when the vessel is put on the subject. It's a standard contract. Then we have something called as subject to enough merchandise, which is STEM. That means the charter has to confirm that the proposed cargo at the loading berth should be available on the proposed date. When the vessel proceeds toward that load port on that specific date, the cargo should be available. Subject to enough merchandise. Subject to receiver's approval. The subject is used by charter to confirm that the cargo and the proposed vessel are acceptable to the receiver. Who, whomsoever is receiving, he needs to make sure that it is acceptable for them. And then we have at last, call us owners and managers approval. The subject is used by the board charters and owners, indicating that final approval is needed by the senior members of the owners, charters, management. Presumably, because negotiations have been concluded by the junior personals without sufficient authority. It also widely used by the owners who wish to check the background of the charters before committing themselves into the contract. That means that it needs to be, you know, seen by the board of directors. So the people who are negotiating are chartering officer or he is a relevant person who can handle the business from their principal's behalf. They need to check up with their management or they need to check up with their principals because they are the ones who do not have the sufficient authority even though they do a negotiation. Charter are also known to be using the subjects when they wish to check the vessel's record of perform. Now, you are sliding into commission and brokerage. Brokerage is ship broker's income from voyage chartering is based on a percentage of the gross freight payable to the ship owner. A ship broker's income is usually termed as brokerage to distinguish it from the address commission. So guys, address commission and brokerage are completely two different terms in which brokerage is mainly the ship broker's income and commission is for the charter as we will see. In deep sea market, brokerage normally amounts to 1.25% of the gross freight and is payable by the ship owner to the broker that means ship owner is the one who pays the broker which is termed as brokerage in addition ship broker may be entitled to an equivalent percentage of the gross amount on the debt freight or demerge 
what is an address commission an address commission is between 1.25% to 5% which is normally charged by the charterer and which is payable by the ship owner charter utilizing the brokers to protect their interests receives the service paid by the owners it is termed as address commission and varies depending charterer's requirement you guys must be a bit confused that you know if charterer is asking the ship owner to transfer his cargo from point a to point b why is he charging address commission it is something like if the charterer is giving or if he is rewarding the ship owner with the business that is what his commission is that is where he is charging 1.25 between 1.25 to 5 percent and normally guys in negotiation you know most of the times the ship broker brokerage can be negotiated but normally it is highly unlikely that address commission will be negotiated in a contract address commission is the fees paid by the vessel owner to the chart the party who owns the cargo and employs a ship broker who will find a proper ship to deliver the cargo as a result the total fees incurred by the charter are reduced by the amount of the address commission what are pdas and fdas we did touch upon these but i'll discuss with you in depth about this so we have pdas pro forma disbursement account statement sent by the ship's agent at a port to the ship owner in advance of the ship's call at the port so whenever a ship approaches a port it needs to upon an agent and that agent is the one who sends an advance notice that what all things will be charged so he just gives an intimation in terms of pro forma disbursement account it consists of expenses that are likely to be incurred including port charges pilotage to wage agent's commission the port charges means when the ship goes to a towards a berth let's say a load port so the berth charges pilotage what is pilotage pilotage is something like he is a specialized person mostly an ex seafarer master or chief officer who comes on board he he knows a lot about the local uh, waters so he helps the ship to maneuver safely inside these local waters towage towage arrangements they are the ones who help to make sure the ship is maneuvered safely and berthed properly and safe and the agent's commission how much the agent is charging so these all expenses are sent under the pro forma disbursement account this account is used to help the ship owner estimate the viability of the voyage and serves as a request by the agent for sufficient funds to be made available prior to the ship's arrival so this helps the ship owner we will be looking into voyage estimate too guys as as we go ahead so this these small small things which we are learning right now will be helping us to understand the uh, voyage estimate question what are final disbursement accounts final disbursement account means an account produced by the agent which describes the disbursement which have been incurred by the agent in providing of the services and related to the commission fees of the services and other sums owned by the company to the agent so it's the final disbursement account which he sends from his behalf to the ship owner when the services have been you know taken up by the ship owner so we have stowage factor the average cubic space occupied by 1 ton weight of the cargo as stowed aboard the ship normally described in terms of cubic meters cubic feet per ton meter cube by ton uh, the other dimensions which we use is we have grain capacity we have bale capacity so what is grain capacity it is a total hold space available for any bulk cargoes and bale capacity is total hold space available for any bulk cargoes so i'll give you an instance where let's imagine the fact that there is a square shaped box okay so this is how the square shaped box is and we try to fill the box with sand so it will fill up fully but now if we try to make some uh, parcels and we we try to fill it up there will be some space which is available which is also known as broken stowage if we pour grains into a hole it will occupy fully but now if we try to bag those grains and then try to fill up the compartment there will be some amount of space which is which will remain that is why the grain capacity is usually greater than the bale capacity the vessel's cubic capacity is given in both grain and bale terms the bale capacity is the volume that can be filled up with the boxes which can consist of boxes pallets or bags the grain capacity which is always bigger than the bale capacity which include all those spaces those spaces are the broken stowage that can be filled up by the bulk cargo such as grains or the fertilizers then again two important concepts guys the relate and the right will cross what is the relate clause in multi form voyage for charter party the relate clause gives the charter the option of sub chartering the ship others however the original charter remains responsible to the owner under the head charter the clause states the charter has the privilege of relating or all of this charter party to the other 
subject to owner's approval first of all which shall not be unreasonably unreasonable withheld charter is guaranteeing to the owner that the due fulfillment of the charter party so I'll, i'll explain you what it means guys so it is generally applicable to time charter parties number 1 because of this clause the charter can relet or sublet the vessel to a third party that third party is a charter the clause reads that charter may sublet the vessel but always remains responsible to the original owner which he had the contract or which he had the nego- the fixture with for due fulfillment of this charter well, let me give you an example guys so you will understand this relet in a, in a better fashion so let's say that the original fixture between the the charter and the ship owner charter a and the ship owner says that there is no trading for the north korean waters so the ship should not never trade in that now since the charter a has subletted the vessel because of relet clause to a charter b the charter b is sending the vessel towards the north korean waters now since the crew under a time charter are being provided by the owner okay he is the one who actually provide because as we learned in lecture 1 the fixed costs are borne by the ship owner and the variable cost are borne by the charterer the captain of the vessel since since he is in touch with owner he is he is asking the owner that boss should we proceed towards the north korean waters because we have been instructed that we should never go into these region so owner will get back to the captain and will say sorry please decline okay so just make sure that the only note here is the original instruction it should always be with respect to the original instruction which happened between the charter and the owner anything which comes up which are you know which doesn't fulfill the requirement of the original charter party will be negated rider clause um, standard charter parties have been using for very long time their use of recommendation by the ship owners and pni associations because they contain clauses that have been generally been tested in courts when disputes have arisen however some standard party form documents may contain clauses that have not kept up to date up to date with changes in the shipping business because these charter parties are dated way long apart from deviations which is more modern both ship owner and charters may also want to amend some standard terms and add terms which are specific to their own needs which is called as the rider clause if they are amending their own terms and condition in a charter party it is termed as a rider clause the clause in which uh, these added terms are contained are known as rider clauses the phrase means that set of additional clauses which substitute or supplement the clauses to the original document standard charter parties forms are treated as a skeleton and what we fill up with the rider clause are termed as flesh of the contract now in in a case of dispute the rider clause will always prevail okay there is one more thing that you know when there is a dispute between the principals which is ship owner and charterer the rider clause will always prevail what is a time charter equivalent time charter equivalent is rate a standard shipping industry performance measure used to compare the period to period changes in a shipping company performance despite the change in the mix of charter types which is spot which is voyage charter time charter bebo charter under which the vessel may be employed between periods in order to compute how how do we calculate the tce is it's the voyage revenues minus the net net expenses available for the total amount of days taken the time charter equivalent is equals to the freight multiplied by the cargo which is being carried minus the broker fees minus the total voyage costs which are variable costs divided by the total voyage days consumed so that is what the time charter equivalent means so finally additional term the first one is the in geographical rotation if the charter have the option of loading or discharging a, a ship in several ports within a particular ranges for example arh region it is important to stipulate that if this option is exercised the ship will be ordered to proceed to the ports in geographical rotation so i'll give you an instance guys in order to understand this very very easily so let's imagine the fact that our vessel is heading towards a load port which is in sikka which is india gujarat okay and the dis- there are two discharge ports one is in singapore and one is in hong kong so the vessel if this term called as geographical rotation is put in the charter party that means the vessel will always follow the load port which is you know once it gets loaded in sikka it will follow to it will go to singapore it will discharge the cargo and then it will go towards the hong kong not the other way around that it can't go to hong kong and then come back again to singapore because 
the vessel is supposed to follow the geographical rotation that is what it means and we have one more term which is called as ballast bonus so charter may offer a ballast bonus in order to induce the ship owner to reach a load port this is equivalent to taking the vessel under the time charter from its present position to the loading port again i'll give you an instance to make you understand this clearer ballast bonus is paid to a ship owner okay for positioning the ship in ballast condition okay this is normally seen in time charter parties it is the lump sum amount which is being paid to the ship owner usually a reward for a position for making sure that vessel is at a certain place and you know it can reach to the requisite place for the delivery in a time charter let's say that vessel is presently at sikka again in india okay and i mean it is supposed to go into a time charter with charter a the delivery is supposed to happen in singapore so the charter gives the ship owner 500000 dollars as bunkers cost for ballast voyage from india sikka to singapore as a reward this reward is mainly called as ballast bonus with this guys i finish off the lecture 3 i hope you liked it since we have finished the lecture 3 i would like to hear out the feedback and tips from you guys so mention in the comment section below if you like the video hit the like button so check out the notes and links in the description below if you like my content guys you can always head to my website and you can get the whole content downloaded the whole content consists of the whole comprehensive lecture slides which we are seeing right now it even consists of past ics question papers and i have solved the ics question papers and my own lecture notes all of this content will help you to understand this subject in a better way So thanks for checking out the video guys subscribe it if you haven't already in the next lecture we are going to see the legal terms used in a chartering process until next time guys ship crew is bringing the best platform to learn about the commercial shipping subjects keep on learning it and we will talk soon